The second segment, Judea, Samaria, and Gaza. First to Rabbi Greenberg. You favor territorial compromise for peace. What does this compromise specifically mean? What is your plan? Autonomy, self-rule, or Palestinian Arab state? Wouldn't such a compromise endanger Israel? A recent poll in al Fajah indicated that 78% of Palestinian Arabs want a state in what is now Israel. In 60 villages within the Green Lines, Palestinian demonstrators have been screaming Iqbal al Yahud, murder the Jews. Moreover, territorial compromise would lead to the expulsion of Jews from areas in which Israel is no longer sovereign. When Israel withdrew from Yamit, Jews were not permitted to remain even under Egyptian sovereignty. I heard no liberal outcry. Would territorial compromise be as repugnant to you as Rabbi Kahana's plan of eviction because it inevitably involves the eviction of Jews? Furthermore, Israel withdraws from Judea, Samaria, and Gaza because of its Arab majority. Would you be prepared to withdraw from part of the Galil? where there is already an Arab majority, and their numbers are growing, is the Galil a possible next step? And finally, are there any limits to what you'd be prepared to give away? For example, if it were absolutely clear that peace could only be achieved if Jerusalem were internationalized, or if Jerusalem were under Jordanian sovereignty, or if Jerusalem were the capital of a Palestinian Arab state, if this were the only way to achieve peace, real peace, would you, Rabbi Greenberg, be agreeable? Rabbi Kahana, you advocate incorporating Judea, Samaria, and Gaza by throwing Arabs out, an idea for which I, by the way, have heard no halakhic support of yet this evening. Isn't there an alternative solution? Incorporate the areas while granting Palestinian Arabs their rights to become citizens of Israel with equal rights and obligations. Jews will not become a minority even if we retain those areas. The percentage of Jews between the Mediterranean and the Jordan since 1967 is virtually the same. Palestinian Arabs are emigrating from their area and the fertility rate has dropped from 8.4 to 5. And history indicates that when given the chance, Palestinian Arabs do not become citizens of Israel. Of the 120,000 Palestinian Arabs living in East Jerusalem, only 700 became Israeli citizens. They want their own sovereignty. And once we incorporate Judea, Samaria, and Gaza, they're likely to move to the already Palestinian Arab state of Jordan, where the majority of the population and government is Palestinian Arab. Why expulsion? for Judea and Samaria when there is a war tower of humane way. And finally, Rabbi Kahana, your position on Judea, Samaria, and Gaza is based on your reading of the halakha. Doesn't the same halakha insist that parts of Lebanon, Syria, and Jordan are biblical lands? Aren't these lands as important to you as Judea, Samaria, and Gaza? If you were in power, would you send the Israeli army to capture these lands. We're going to add a moment to the first responses. First, a five-minute response by Rabbi Greenberg, followed by Rabbi Kahana's five-minute response. So, but I think it would have been more fun if we had had Ali Weiss openly debate the both of us. It would have been really even more interesting than it is now. But I welcome his questions and his uh, challenge to all of us. Um, one comment before I respond to the question of the West Bank, and that is the decision will be taken, thank God, not by me or not by Americans who are sitting here in America, but by primarily and fundamentally the Israeli people who live in Israel, whose lives are on the line, and who make the decision at the cost of their children, God forbid, and of their lives. I do believe American Jews, because we are committed to Israel, because we indeed have to put ourselves on the line for it, and have done so increasingly, as we have defied and begun to apply ourselves politically, and even defied the threat of dual loyalty has been thrown at us, I believe our right to speak to Israel and to be listened to has gone up. 
But the basic decision is obviously going to be the Israel and the population on the spot, and I affirm that anything I say is not meant to take away from that truth. Secondly, I want to say the situation has to unfold. There is no clear answer now. Those who want a quick or direct and simple solution do resort to things that I think are more tragic and more terrible and more self-defeating than the present situation, which is very difficult. What then of the future of Judea and Samaria? Like all Jews, I was thrilled by 1967, moved by the unification of Jerusalem, touched by the chance to pray in Hebron. I believe that prophecy is being fulfilled in our time. But I also believe that security comes first. Whatever decisions we will make will be made on security grounds, first and foremost. The old borders will be adjusted and must be adjusted for security's sake. And furthermore, we will give nothing back except for crystal clear peace. But that we are going to get, and in that context, I believe territorial compromise is very much in order. And I believe the overwhelming majority of Israel will support that. It is true that now the population is seen as split 50-50 almost. But the truth is, before Yom Yid and before Sadat came to, Egypt, to Israel, the overwhelming majority were against giving back the land. The minute a serious Arab leader stepped forward and put himself on the line and made clear he wants to make peace, they gave back everything. And the majority supported that. So don't be intimidated by the split in the Israeli population. When there's a serious chance for peace, there will be overwhelming support for peace because that's where the Israelis are. They are not looking for glory as much as they love the land. I believe the first and foremost commitment is to live and to let live in the land of Israel. Thirdly, there is an indigenous Arab population on the West Bank in Gaza. It's a million three hundred forty-two thousand and growing. If we add them to the Israeli Arab population, that changes the balance from 82, 6, 18 to 65, 35. Even more concerned, the highest birth rates in the Arab world in the, in the, uh, in the Israel area are on the West Bank in Gaza because the women there are in rural situations and in poverty, and their absolute births would make Arab births outnumber the Jews, and for that reason alone, because that is the only potential plausible theory of imbalance demographically, one should be willing to trade the land. But the deeper reason is even deeper than that. Our dream is realized. We came back to the land of Israel. We prayed and hoped for it. But there is a population here, and they are human beings. It's true they are neglected by their own brothers, other Arabs. It's true they're exploited by the PLO and the cut Israel. But they have roots, attachments, hopes, and lives. They didn't have a Palestinian nationalism 25 years ago, but now they do. In far exposure to Israel, and our model of self-respect and dignity and self-rule. If I can make room for them, I should. If I can make room for their dignity, the answer is yes. And the greatest respect and the greatest peace chance comes when there is self-rule and self-responsibility. Now my commitment to their dignity and to their freedom cannot be to commit suicide. It is no mitzvah to destroy themselves, and therefore we will offer peace, and if there is a new leadership that is prepared to make peace, they will get a chance. Will it be autonomy a la Camp David, as Shamir is now moving toward, as well as Paris? I say, it's up to them to convince me to convince us, the Jewish people. They will be demilitarized, they'll have to make that commitment, they will have to purge their terrorists. The farther they go in making that commitment, the more they can earn. Can they earn up to a Palestinian state? Not at the present time, but if they live in peace for a long time and convince us that it's absolutely peaceful, why not? In short, we prefer the status quo for 20 years, we made a mistake. But we understand now that there is a chance to make peace. I don't know if you would to produce. As bad as the present situation is with the, with the West Bank, my feeling is maybe a new leadership will emerge, that when they realize they will not get their way, they will have to live with the Jews. I don't say the Arabs are dreaming of living with us. I say realism will win out in the same way that Germany and France hated each other for three wars, but when they saw they had no choice, they learned to settle down together. Rabbi Aaron Lichtenstein, this past weekend, a friend of mine told me, spoke to his group. He is in Gush Etzion, on the road to Bethlehem across the Green Line. He said to his students, if peace means that I'll have to show my passport to travel every day from Jerusalem to Gush, then I will do it. But I say, you won't have to show your passport. There will be a condominium possibility of federalism of like the United States, in our case, in Canada border. Those are the kind of possibilities that are before us. I would love to have the dream of Israel everywhere. But life comes first, peace comes first, and let the Arabs convince us and show us how to make peace they can earn everything they will deserve by showing us and convincing us of the truth is.
is that the decision concerning the boundaries will be made not by Jews living in this country. It's well taken. The same thing, Rabbi Greenberg, I will say about the moving of the Arabs out of Israel. It will be made by us who live in Israel, not by Jews. Security must come first, and Rabbi Greenberg says, of course there must be territorial compromise. Name me one Arab leader, one Arab moderate leader, who has ever said that he will settle for anything less than is you're giving up the entire West Bank, Judea, Samaria, Gaza, and the eastern part of Arab capital city. Name me one. There are none. We live in a fool's paradise in Riverdale. Well, I live in Israel, and I know the problem. True, we made a terrible mistake for 20 years. In 1967, we had the opportunity to throw them out, and we lost out on that. Our dream is realized. It's not true. It's not true. The Palestinians are waiting to destroy that dream. What are you talking about? We will give them the West Bank. Do you think that there is one Arab refugee in Lebanon who comes from the West Bank? There is not one. They all come from the Galilee. They all come from Haifa. Do you think that there is one Arab refugee in Gaza who comes from the West Bank? They come from Rome. They come from Jaffa. They come from Nur. They come from what is now Ashkelon and Persheba. That is where they want to return. Will we return that to them? I do it. I do it for one, one thing. The madness of annexing the territories and offering them the opportunity to become citizens of Israel? What have they accepted? Already there are Arabs. Suri Maseba, a professor at USA, an Arab, who is demanding, pushing, let us accept citizenship in Israel. No. Of course we have to annex the territories, but not the Arabs. Annex the territories and let us compromise by giving up the Arabs. <laughs> of course Southern Lebanon is part of the biblical boundaries. Of course it is. And so is Jordan. And of course, if God forbid I would be a prime minister in case of a war, not that there should be a war, and we conquered that, of course we would not give that up either. Of course not. I'm not prepared to start a war for those boundaries. Just as they had, they sat still in 1967, I would have sat with gritted teeth, but not started a war to get Samaria and Judea and Gaza. But they began it. And if you begin it, you lose, you lose. Palestinians do not want peace. They want Palestine, and I understand that. Someone who has Jewish national pride can understand an Arab who has Arab national pride. They believe that we are thieves, Rabbi Greenberg, even you. They believe that you too are a thief. You are the goal to come and say, we'll give you back some, but not all. Of course, they believe that all of it belongs to them. Can we not trust that? What a comparison between Germany and France. As if Germany or France ever said that Germany was really French, or that France was really German. The Palestinians believe that there should be no Israel. That is the problem. And we sit and play game, games with them and worse with ourselves. The Arabs are not, and I repeat for the second time, are not leaving the territories. They are coming back in droves. Unemployment now is, is rife in Kuwait, in Saudi, in Oman, in Abu Dhabi. They are returning. They never left. They left their families behind and sent their checks back constantly. There are Arabs from America, Arabs who came from America, who are now coming, coming back. I saw them when I was on reserve duty. Ramallah. No. To live in this delusion. This fact, that fact, that somehow they will realize that time is not on their side. Time is on their side. 
as long as we have Jews who split the community, as long as we have Jews who condemn the policy of the government of Israel, as long as we have Jews who march with the Palestinians, then time is on their side. I'm not afraid of the Arabs. I'm afraid of such Jews as this one here, who, well-meaning, well-meaning, is a danger to the existence of the Jewish